All right. Hello, all my honors to Algebra 1 people out there. Uh, welcome back to your video lesson for Section 5.6, Graphing Linear Inequalities. All right. So uh, real quick, this is week number three. Uh, the, the second week, you all did even better than the first week. The work was a lot better, more consistent from what I've graded so far. I don't have them all graded yet, but uh, my plan is to get that done on Monday. Um, what we got coming up now, hopefully by now you all feel confident with solving systems of linear equations. Um, we are going to tack on two sections to this unit and that's going to be it for the year. So week three, we're learning about graphing linear inequalities. That's like an inequality uh, that has two variables in it. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and then five, seven. And yes, for those of you paying attention at home, we did skip 5-5. Five, five. I already forget what it's about, but it's something stupid that you don't need to know. So don't worry about 5-5, five, five, all right? We're moving on to 5-6 and 5-7. Five, 5-7 seven. Five, seven will be um, solving a system of linear inequalities by graphing. Okay, so kind of the it piggybacks on what you're learning today. So real important to understand how to graph these linear inequalities so that you can do it again in 5-7. And then with that, so that'll be week four. Uh, we'll learn about 5-7, and then week 5, it's just going to be review, and I am going to test you over unit 5 in that last week, all right? So it's not a final, but it's kind of like a final, because that, that last week, you're just going to be taking a test, making sure that you know how to do all these skills that we've learned in unit 5. And one more thing before we get started, uh, just remember, when I grade those packets, um, I'm making comments and I'm writing on every single one of your packets in Schoology. Uh, so you can access that assignment after the grade is put in. You can read what I said on it. If you're missing points, I always let you know why. Uh, if you're doing a great job, I'm sure I've said something nice to, to keep you going and, and keep you motivated. Uh, but like I said, I'm just so impressed with the work that you've been doing. Okay, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. What are we learning today? All right, so we're talking about linear inequalities in two variables. And basically, we're going to take a look at some definitions here. This is nothing new to us, all right? It's, it's like an equation with two variables, which we've been talking about uh, for the last couple months here. But instead of an equal sign, we're gonna use an inequality sign. And of course, we know our inequality signs, uh, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. And of course, the fifth, it's kind of like the fifth beetle. Uh, he, he doesn't really count, but there is a fifth uh, inequality sign, and it's this sign. That is not what I wanted to do. It's this sign right here. So uh, the, the equal sign with the line through it, that means not equal to. All right, we're not going to see that one too much, so I didn't really include it here. Uh, that's not, we're not going to need that. So a couple examples of a linear equality in two variables. All right, if we're talking about slope-intercept form, you can have an equation maybe like this. Y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 1. Okay, or if it's in standard form, maybe it's 2x plus 3y is greater than eight, all right, whatever it might be, those are both linear inequalities in two variables. Okay, so we know what that is. So what's a solution to a linear inequality? Well, it's no different than an equation. Uh, a solution is an ordered pair, a number, you know, you have to have a number for x and a number for y, and when we plug those into the inequality, it makes it true, okay? So remember, an inequality can be true or false. If we have um, let's get my pen out here. All right, if we have the inequality 2 is less than 3, that's true. We know that, all right? But let's say we have the inequality, we end up getting 2 is less than 1. Well, that's false. So two things can happen when you have an inequality and you plug numbers in for the variables. All right, so a solution is going to make it true, and a non-solution, I guess, would make it false, okay? So a number, a, a, an ordered pair that is not a solution, okay? Uh, the graph of linear inequality. So something unique happens here when we are dealing with inequalities instead of equations. Uh, if you'll recall, when we graph an equation in two variables, we get a line, okay? So the line represents where all the solutions to that equation are, okay? So if, so if you put an ordered pair in for x and y, you put it into the equation, and it gives you a true statement, like one side is equal to the other, then that point is going to be on the graph. And the, those graphs are straight lines. Well, when we have an inequality, we have a lot more possible solutions. 
So if you look down at the bottom of the page here, we have a graph, and this is what it actually looks like. So there are a couple parts to this graph, because remember, um, now we're saying, we're not just saying that y has to be equal to mx plus b. We could say y is greater than mx plus b, okay? Um, or less than or anything like that. So uh, just a couple more vocab words, and then we'll get into kind of what that means for us here. All right, so um, the next word is half plane. I'm just going to show you all this here. We'll talk about the parts of the graph here. All right, um, so a half plane is when, okay, so you have the coordinate plane. This is a whole plane, the, the coordinate plane. Remember, it extends for e in every direction forever. So um, this is just a small representation of what the coordinate plane actually is. When you draw a line in the coordinate plane, you're splitting it in half, okay? So even if it doesn't look like half on the screen that we're looking at, the coordinate plane that we're looking at, remember, it, it extends for uh, ever in both directions. So we are really cutting it in half by drawing that line there. Okay, so that creates two half planes. It means um, there's, there's the half that's above the line, and we call this a boundary line. It'll make a lot of sense in a second. And then there's the half plane that's below the boundary line. Uh, so that's the vocab you need to know. Now let's talk steps, okay? How do we graph a linear inequality in two variables? The awesome news for you guys is if you know how to graph a line, you're going to be just fine and you're going to skate through this lesson. And you're going to love it because there's just a couple extra things you got you to gotta worry about, okay? If you're one of those who still is kind of iffy on graphing a line, remember this is like the hundredth time I told you in this class. It's going to come back over and over and over again. So if you, if you know how to graph a line, things are going to go well for you. Okay, so here's what we do. Step one, remember, we're not just graphing a line anymore. We're graphing an inequality. So there's going to be a lot of solutions that we have to show on a graph like this with some shading. And sometimes the boundary line will be dotted. Sometimes will be solid. Let's talk about why that happens. All right. So you're going to graph the boundary line for the inequality. So basically, you're going to take whatever inequality you have, you're going to treat it like an equation, and you're going to graph the line. All right. So you use a dashed line or a dotted line for these two signs, less than or greater than. The reason being, uh, if y can only be less than whatever this expression is, because remember, we, we, when all is said and done, we put a number in for x, we put a number in for y, we have a slope, we have a y-intercept, we're going to have a number on this side and a number on that side. All right. So in order for uh, it to be a solution, the y value, which is the vertical axis in the coordinate plane, has to be less than whatever this value is over here. So where are the values of y less than the boundary line? They're underneath. So you shade below, actually, and we'll talk about that in a second. All right. Now, with this, when you have this sign, you use a solid line because y doesn't have to just be less than the boundary line. It can also be equal to the boundary line. So when you have a less than or greater, <laughs> less than or greater, less than or equal to sign or a greater than or equal to sign, you have to use a solid boundary line because any point that's on the line itself is also a solution. Y is allowed to be equal to MX plus B. So that line itself is full of solutions. This one, the line is not a solution because Y can't be equal to MX plus B. It can only be less. Okay, so next, once you've got that boundary line graphed and you've decided it, it's either dotted or solid, uh, now they, they tell you to use a test point that is not on the boundary line. That's their step two. Um, and that means you, you pick an ordered pair, you, you run it through your inequality, and you see if you get a true statement or a false statement. And if you get a true statement, it means wherever your test point is, that's where the solution's half plane is, and you just shade in that region. Um, and if you get a false statement, then the other side of the boundary line must be where the solutions are. I have an even better way. This is uh, the shortcut to end all shortcuts. Okay, you're going to love this. So um, instead of using a test point, if you just want to use this chart, it never fails. So the one important uh, thing you need to have, though, is you need to get all of your inequalities in y equals mx plus b form. If you do that, and, and remember, that's how we love having them because that makes it so easy to graph. You just plot the y-intercept, use the slope to find more points. So we're pros at that. Uh, so we want to get it in that form anyway. But when you do, there's a bonus for you. If you follow this chart right here, which I'm erasing now, all right, that's all you got to know. When 
you use this symbol less than, uh, then you are going to use a dotted line and you're going to shade below the boundary line. All right. So um, remember, all lines in the coordinate plane, unless it's vertical, uh, have an above the line and below the line. So you just got to shade below the line. If it's less than, uh, greater than, you use dotted and shade above. Less than or equal to, you use a solid line and you shade below. And greater than or equal to, you use a solid line and shade above. So those are your four options. That's how you finish the graph of a linear inequality. So let's try it out with some examples. All right, example number one says graph the inequality. All right, so here's our inequality. Y is greater than 2x minus 3. So remember, step one, we're going to graph it like it's an equation. So we're going to pretend for a second that it's Y equals 2x minus 3. All right, we're going to plot that, uh, that line on the coordinate plane. All right, remember, we're going to use... So I guess I'll just show you the graph now if I can figure out how to get rid of this thing. All right, and then let's just delete that. Okay, so there it is. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, we are, so you can see, I'll get my laser pointer out here. Um, here we have our y-intercept is negative 3. So we're going to put a point on negative 3, and then the slope of positive 2 tells me, so in fraction form, that number will be 2 over 1. So I rise 2, run 1. Remember, it's rise over run. So we go up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. We plot all the points we can. And then, now, once we know where those points are, now we got to go on to step two. Do we use a solid line or a dotted line? So, that's easy if you're, if you're using Mr. Schaub's awesome cheat sheet over here. We are using a greater than sign, so I know the line is going to be dotted, and I'm going to shade above it. That's exactly what I did here, if you take a look. All right. Now, again, the reason that we do that, it's always good to know the reasons, um, the boundary line cannot be a solution. Right, right. The y says the inequality says y has to be greater than 2x minus 3, and y equals 2x minus 3 is the boundary line. So, all the y values that are solutions have to be greater than that line. That's why we shade above. All right, so there we go. That's the explanation there. Y must be greater than 2x minus 3. So, we shade all the y values that are larger than the boundary line, and those are the points that lie above it. All right, example two. So why don't you try it? Uh, try example two the same way I did example one. All right, go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and give you a little time. See if your answer looks like mine. Hey, just solve that equation. Yeah, smartest students in the nation. Uh, Mercy representing for the vill. That's why I'm all up in your grill. Yeah, this one is for my class. Yeah, this one is for the Jags. Yeah, gotta put them in a tag. Cause when this stuff goes viral, yeah, we gonna get that bag. <laughs> Sorry if you're mad that your teacher doesn't feature lyrics popping out his head. Woo, I just sit back and I laugh. I just sit back and get cash. Yeah, I just sit back and teach math. If you get these inequalities and put it on a graph. My girlfriend's dying laughing right now, probably out of embarrassment. I hope you guys enjoy these because I, I enjoy making them. All right, let's see how you did. All right, so our inequality was y is less than or equal to negative one-third x plus four. Remember, we're just going to graph this boundary line, so I'm going to fly through this because you know what? It's a video. You can go back and watch it again if you need to. All right, y-intercept is at negative four. Slope tells us to go down one and right three because it's a negative slope, so it should be going downhill. All right, there's our boundary line. Next, we, we ask ourselves solid or dotted, and we're looking up at the cheat sheet, and it says we use a solid line and we shade below because we're using less than or equal to. So solid line, shade below, we're done. Easy peasy, that's it for the notes. Um, let's move on to the practice problem. All right, so not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, a couple things I wanted to point out, but I did three out of the 12 of these problems for you on the notes packet and you're looking at them right now. So um, I think that's good. I think y'all can handle the rest. A couple things I wanted to point out just real quick. When you're doing this uh, one through three, remember to figure out if it's a solution, they give you an ordered pair. You got to plug those numbers in for X and Y. And yes, the order matters. The X is the first number. The Y is the second. Plug them in. See if you get a true or false statement when the dust settles, when you, when you simplify everything as much as you can. If the, if, 
the resulting expression is false, like this one is, it, a lot of students want to say this is true, but 5 is not greater than 5. 5 is equal to 5. So if, if being equal is not an option, then this is actually false. If that had been a greater than or equal to sign, then yes, it would be true. But here we do not have a solution. So what that means is three, the point 0.32 would not be in the shaded region if you graph this line. Okay. Uh, another thing to remember when you have, so these first three, they're, they're special cases. Uh, those boundary lines are going to be either horizontal or vertical lines when you only have one uh, variable in the equation. Again, this is all review stuff. I'm expecting that you know how to graph these horizontal and vertical lines already. So um, just remember, the above, this is the only time, number six, where the above below shading above below rule does not work because there's not an above or below. There's only left and right. But still, common sense prevails. If x has to be greater than 3, then all the solutions are going to be where x is greater than 3. So when it's when x is 4, 5, 6, etc., all these numbers are going to be solutions. So you just have to shade to the right side if it's greater and the left side if it's less when you're dealing with a vertical line. Okay, last little note here. Uh, I also did 11 for you, and remember, if an equation or inequality, I should say, is not in slope-intercept form, you need to get it into slope-intercept form first, okay? That's always the first thing you do. It's so, so easy to graph when it's in this form, so that's something we want to do anyway, but remember, the shortcut does not work unless you, you get it in uh, slope-intercept form, so um, it's always a good idea to start out with that if it's not already in slope-intercept form for you. And I think you have three of them here uh, that are not in slope-intercept form. To the application. All right, application. So this is very similar to the one you had last week. Uh, story problems are so, so important. Uh, we have to know how these uh, occur, when these inequalities occur in real-life situations. Um, and as you can imagine, the situations here, they can be applied to a lot of different things uh, in everyday life. So, um, like I said on the notes, I'm expecting you to use all the resources. So, I'm going to do number one on the notes. I'm going to do number two here on the video. And I'm going to do number three in our Zoom session on Thursday. So, if you're paying attention, if you're doing everything you need to do, then you will have the answers worked out solutions to all three of these problems. All right. So you're welcome. All right. It is important that you're not just copying them down and you really understand them. All right. Last time I'm going to say that probably not, but let's go to number two here. Okay. First we read, all right, Kara is filling her bathtub. The cold water flows at a rate of four gallons per minute. The hot water flows at a rate of three gallons per minute. Kara wants no more than 60 gallons of water in the tub. Okay. So First thing we always do is define our variables. Luckily, they did that for us, all right? So they say X is the time that the cold water is turned on, all right? So in other words, if the cold water is flowing at four gallons per minute and it's going for three minutes, then you would multiply four times three to figure out how many gallons have gone into that bathtub, all right? So maybe like four X is the expression we're gonna wanna use here, all right? So look at the color coding here. Um, okay, Y is the time that the hot water is turned on. So we have some information about the hot water too. That's going to help us write our inequality. And then here's our constraint. It's called a constraint or a boundary like we were talking about before. Kara wants no more than 60 gallons of water in the tub. So can she have less than 60? Yes. Can she have exactly 60? Yes. Can she have more? No. All right. So what no more than really means is less than or equal to, all right? We want the water in the tub to be less than or equal to 60 gallons. Okay, so our inequality now looks like this, and this is where it comes from. So every time you set up these problems, the boundary or the constraint is, usually it's like the total amount. That's going to go on one side of your inequality, and on the other side are the things that are adding up to get to that total amount or that boundary, that constraint, okay? So what we're saying here is we want four, four gallons per minute times the number of minutes that X is turned on, that the cold water is turned on. Uh, that'll give us the total amount of cold water in the tub. If we add to that the total amount of hot water in the tub, that'll give us the total water in the tub, and the total water in the tub needs to be less than or equal to 60. So that works. It makes sense. The only problem is we do not have it in slope-intercept form. So that's the first thing we got to do. And I have my work right here. All right. So uh, if you take a look, what I did is, and I can zoom in on this, I'm sure. 
so you can see it really clearly. All right, I took that inequality. We subtract 4x. Remember, we're getting y by itself. So we subtract 4x on both sides. I always like to use this move, slide that x term in front of the positive 60 because we're used to seeing it in y equals mx plus b form. Uh, and then we just have to divide everything by 3. That gives me y by itself over here. We do not flip the inequality sign, but you do have to remember that. When we're solving inequalities, we have to remember, if we divide both sides by a negative number, we do have to flip this sign. So don't sleep on that rule. Uh, okay, so we have negative 4 divided by 3. That's okay. We love it when our slope's a fraction because it tells us exactly what the rise and the run are. So that's cool. That, that can't be simplified. 60 divided by 3 can be simplified. That gives me 20. So now I'm ready to graph. Okay, so let's take a look at the graph here. All right, so we start at 20. There's our y-intercept, and then our slope is negative, so we expect it to go downhill. We're going to go down 4 and write 3. So you got to check your scales, make sure they're the same, and if they are, then you can just go by boxes. All right, so we can go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and go write 3, and we're back on our line, and there we, we have the two points we need. You can see I filled in the rest of them. Like If you go down 4 on the y-axis and write 3 on the x-axis, you would be right here. Okay, so I did put all those points in, but remember, you really only need two to draw the line. All right, uh, and then we have to worry about the dotted or solid and the shading. So because we're using less than or equal to, we're going to use a solid line, and we're going to shade below. All right, go back and, and check that cheat sheet again. Uh, if you forgot, that's a good thing to memorize uh, so that you never have to worry about getting the shading and the dotting wrong. Um, okay, so let's read the rest of the question. Now we've got it graphed, and now we've got to kind of use this graph to answer these questions. All right, this is the most important part here. So first question, which of the following is a solution to the inequality? Well, remember, if it's a solution, it's going to be in the shaded region of the graph. So over here, I've got the three points plotted. 516 is outside, that's not a solution. 125 is outside, that's not a solution. But 104, that's a big 104, good buddy. That is our champion. So we are going to select option B. And then for number four, I'm going to pop down here and give you a fit. Oh, you get a sneak preview of what the answers were from the notes there. All right, so number four is right here. There's 10, four, there's our answer. And so we cross out those letters. Remember, that's how we do these uh, worksheets here. Uh, it's fun, we got a, we got a <laughs> whoops. We have a puzzle that we got to figure out. And so that's one step on the way to answering the question, what do you call a pony that doesn't whinny? All right, and it's a knee slapper, let me tell you. Just like that last one about the cow that doesn't give milk, <laughs> an utter failure, oh, are you kidding me? Uh, I bet you were just laughing, laughing, laughing. All right, it's, it's going to be just as good. So you have a lot to look forward to. All right, number five. How many minutes will it take to get 60 gallons of water if only cold water is turned on? All right, so if we're talking cold water, it always helps to have your axes labeled. All right, so I labeled that here, and I even color code them. Isn't that cute? Cold water is blue, and uh, hot water is red. So... Um, we're looking at cold water and we're seeing if we only use uh, cold water. In other words, if the Y value is zero, then we're gonna be right here. And you can tell just from looking, that's probably gonna be 15. And as a matter of fact, it is 15. All right, so um, another way you can find that, remember, you can plug in uh, a zero for Y and then solve the inequality for X and you will get your answer. All right, so uh, 15 minutes is the answer there. Uh, we'll pop down and, and check out those answers at the bottom just in a second. Let's talk about six. If x equals three minutes, what are the possible values of y? So, lightsaber time. If x is three, so we're along the x-axis and we're right here at three. All right, so I go up any of these values. Remember, the horizontal line, all or not horizontal, the vertical line, all of these x values are three. So, y could be zero. It can't be any less than zero because a negative... Uh, a number of minutes in this problem doesn't make any sense. So we it could be zero. It can go all the way up to 16. All right, so there is a way of writing that using inequalities. It's called a compound inequality. And so this is what you're going to have to do. Uh, remember, it is it might be new to some of you, but I give you help on all three problems uh, if you know where to find it. So um, this is how we want to answer. Why could be anything from zero to 16? This compound inequality is kind of saying, uh, if you look at it here, 
0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 16. So we're saying y is between 0 and 16, but because of these little lines in the bottom, these are less than or equal to signs, we're also saying y could be equal to 0, it could be equal to 16, it could be any number in between. And that's, and that's all those numbers right here are shaded. So that is true. All right, so, so let's see. Number 5, we got 15, and number 6, we got uh, the compound inequality right here, uh, and let's go find them at the bottom. Okay, and you can see right here, there's our answer to number six, is that compound inequality they're looking for. And number five, there's our 15, so we cross those out too. Again, I, I'll give it to you because I don't care if you have the answers, I'm looking at your work, and those of you who did in incomplete work uh, <laughs> last week, you lost points for it, and hopefully uh, it looks a little bit better uh, this time, but honestly, the work really improved from week one to week two. And I think it's because now you know I'm actually grading it. I'm actually looking at your work and making sure you understand it. All right, that's not gonna stop. So uh, make sure you're not just faking your way through this. It's really gonna hurt you when it comes time to take that test at the end of the year. All right, so uh, that's it for me. Uh, any questions, uh, definitely come to my Zoom session. Email me anytime uh, from 10 to three and I'll be happy to help you. And I managed to keep the video under a half hour this time, so go me. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Good luck this week, and stay safe out there. See ya.